Hey guys, thanks for stopping by the Peace Garage. Well, we're going to rebuild the carburetor for the Studebaker. Now, <clears throat> whenever you rebuild a carburetor, or any carburetor, there's a couple things that I recommend to help make the job easier and uh, less aggravating. First of all, work on a table that's clean, and I like to put on a white sheet, uh, some kind of cloth, because there are a lot of small parts that roll around and it's very frustrating when it falls off, goes on the floor and you can't find it. So work on a clean surface, preferably white, makes it easy to see the parts and, and work slow so that way you won't lose any of the parts. That's number one. Number two, when you get your, you should have a gasket set or a, a rebuild kit for your carburetor. I like to take it out and lay out all the parts and just take a quick look uh, at all of the gaskets that are included in the kit because there, there will be many um, some of them you won't use. Some of them, uh, some of them you'll have questions on direction fitting. So I like to take a look at the gaskets first. And like I said, there are a lot of small parts. Uh, this is the seat needle valve and seat um, gaskets for the bowl. Um, a lot of these little gaskets see some very small gaskets. And as I dump these out here, I'll show you what I mean. So this particular you have a little ball bearing here. This is about a very, very small ball bearing. And uh, let me move this over here. This particular carburetor kit has very small clips. I mean, these are small, so small that, you know, I, if I pick them up, you wouldn't be able to see them. Very small clips, uh, little, little o rings, got some seats here. And uh, this is a four barrel, we have two of the seat assemblies, and a bunch of small gaskets. So work off a nice clean table and make it very easy to find your parts and make it difficult for the parts to roll away. So let's get started taking this apart. Now when I start, I like to lay the parts out in front of me so I can kind of identify them as I'm taking them apart. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start by taking off my choke. And what I did was I put a small mark here. You can see I put a small little yellow line right here. And that's going to help me, when I put it back together, to line it back up where it was. There's a spring inside there. So that's kind of important. So I'll start by taking off my choke. As I take my last screw off the choke here, there's a spring on the inside that actually actuates the choke. So, take this off. And I'm going to release the spring a little bit. And note that there is a gasket in here. So here's my old gasket. And this is the spring. This is the spring that gets wound up when you turn that when you turn this, it puts the pressure on the choke to close the choke. And this is how the choke works here. So that spring rubs against here, and that's what closes your choke. Now I can take off my choke housing and pull the whole assembly off. The choke comes off pretty simple. Just take this rod off the opposing side. And you want to remember the direction that faces so you can put it back on. There's a couple screws on the inside here. And if you notice when you take your carburetor apart, nothing is torqued down super tight. It's all uh, kind of hand tight. Nothing needs to be driven on with a, a ton of force. So don't force anything. If I take the two screws out of the center butterfly plate, Again, these are really, really small screws. I'll be able to take my butterfly plate off. Now the shaft is sitting here. I should be able to slowly remove the choke assembly with the, with the uh, gasket. Just slide that out nice and slow. So there's my, my choke assembly. I'll set it up to the side. I'm going to gently pull off my gasket seal here. It's pretty thick actually. It's like an eighth of an inch thick. The replacement, the replacement is considerably thinner by about half. So I'm going to seat it off to the side, but I'm going to keep that just in case. So now what I'm going to do is before I continue, I'm going to take all the fittings off on the outside because it's a lot easier to take the fittings off when it's all together. Now I can work on taking these linkages off. And this is the set for the choke. And as you can see, there's a lot of little pieces here. This little fitting here, and I'll zoom in so you can see, is like a little Zeus fastener. And, and, and the way it works is you push push it down and turn it, 
I push it down and turn it 90 degrees and it comes off a little spring that's what holds that in place likewise this fitting here you can see he's got a little clip so I can pull that little clip off and I can pull the rod out before I take the top bowl off I'm going to take out the top it's like a screen filter here in the front and in the back it's just a plug now I can start to work the top of the bowl off of the carburetor once you have all the screws loose hold bowl of the top of the bowl assembly should lift right off I'll gently set this to the side the reason you got to be gentle with this is because underneath you have your metering valves these are the metering valves the floats for the level inside the needle valve all that stuff has got to be very very gentle so don't uh, let all the bolts fall off but yeah don't let it fall on top of that now even though this carburetor was rebuilt recently the reason I'm going to rebuild it again or taking it apart is because these adjustment screws which are your mixture screws for idle mixture screws they weren't doing anything the last person that worked on the engine said that these were not doing anything uh, when the engine was at idle so I want to take this apart and take a look at that I'm just going to separate the bowl set this aside from my uh, Venturi plate and um, nothing looks um, striking right off the bat but I need to clean this up and take these screws out of here and see what that looks like inside those venturis. Now this is interesting and, and you might run into this problem might help. I took these needles out and the needles look pretty clean. The needles are in pretty good shape but I think I found what the problem is why those weren't working. In the bottom of your of the throttle plate and you have these butterflies in here these are the primary and these are the secondary and what happens when you step on the gas this opens up and lets gas uh, sucks the air in with the ga um, fuel and the air and then when you really stomp on it the secondaries kick in and then the, secondary, the secondaries open up so these are the secondaries these are the primaries and I think this is what the problem is I think whoever rebuilt this carburetor last made a mistake and it's easy to make this mistake let me get a little more light here the mistake is this um, if you look at this when, when these things open all the way when you let go they're supposed to close all the way now the secondaries are closed all the way and I'm going to try let me see if I can get a, a little, some light in there you can see that this, this, those are closed all the way you can't see, if I put this light underneath you can't see any light through however the primaries when I, when I close this all the way when the throttle plate should be closed I'm going to see that light shining through there that light shining through there means that these are not closing this is not closing all the way and there's a couple reasons that I cannot close all the way it's not because the linkage over here the linkage has nothing to do with it that's not holding it up what usually happens is if you put it together and you if you have these swapped or if you have them upside down they won't close all the way so I suspect that the uh, butterflies on there they're, they're in there wrong and that's what's keeping this from closing all the way if those are held from being closed all the way you're always going to have air and fuel getting through there and if that's the case when you screw in your needle valve they're not going to do anything because there's such a huge amount of air going through there so it's tough to get, a, get your idle set so I'm going to take these butterflies out see if I can get them to set in there better so that they're completely closed when when it should be closed they shouldn't be able to see any light through there well mystery solved the butterfly plates were actually turned around 180 degrees they're really really close but they're just turned around there's a slight bevel on the one edge here that allows it to close completely so now when I close this if I take a flashlight and hold it behind there there's no light coming through so those are completely closed now that explains one thing that explains why the the, the uh, throttle here the plate isn't all the way touching the screw for the idle so this was probably screwed all the way out trying to get the idle lower and they couldn't get the idle wouldn't go any lower because there was air coming in through air and fuel coming in between the butterfly there so now I suspect we'll have to adjust the idle up to get that get that to work properly so when you put your butterflies together you gotta make sure that when you close it it's closed all the way around and that 
all four barrels or two, depending on how many you have. Sometimes it's one. Sometimes you can have one plate, whatever it is. It's got, they got to be closed. It's got to be flush and you can't see any light. If you do, it's not going to be adjustable and your carburetor is not going to work right. Now I can clean this up. I don't have to disassemble anymore. I can clean it up and start putting it together. Alright, putting this back together. Right over here where the pump is. Down there, in, down, way down in there, there's a inlet check ball. And that's this, this really small ball bearing. Let me see if I can, see if I can, you can see it. Real small ball bearing. This small ball bearing goes at the bottom of that. Uh, that opening you see down there. And there's this cage, kind of like a catcher keeper that, that holds, uh, that goes on top of it. So you just pull that out, you replace the needle and the ball, I'm sorry, you replace the ball check that's in there with that little cage. And then there's this inlet needle, pilot needle that goes in right here underneath the jet which is the um, metering jet this is the jet that goes in this comes you put a new uh, new gasket on there and this metering jet goes right in here and again when you're putting this together you don't need a ton of force you know hand tight not cranking on it just just enough to seal those gaskets. Then I flip the bowl over, put my gasket on, and it really it can only go on one way. You got to make sure that this slot is down where the the holes are for the two screws, and then the butterfly plate or the needle valve plate, metering plate. It'll sit right in there. I put my screws in. I have the bowl set aside. I'm going to work on the top assembly right now, which are the metering, uh, the metering needles here in the pump. And if you take take out these these two screws, loosen these two screws, this the shaft should slide right out. And hold the pump there so the pump doesn't fly out. It's kind of wound up there. That's the whole metering assembly inside. The way that goes together. Now I can take this out and change my, my pump assembly on the bottom. So by taking out this clip, I can change my pump. I'm replacing that pump assembly on the bottom there with this new pump. And it's pretty simple. You just take off this clip on the top. And they always fly off but they give you spare ones so it's pretty simple the way that works pull the shaft out and comes off and then the pump assembly comes right out the bottom Pump goes right at the bottom like this. That's it. Just like that. Change that pump. If you change your seats and you drop in the needles, then these are a little different than, than the pointy kind. These are like a flat face seal. Then the float simply goes on top. Make sure I got them in the right way. Pin just goes in, the float just sits there like that. Just make sure the float works nice and smooth on both sides. Basically, you have to take off both of the float assemblies in order to get the new gasket underneath here. So you take off both the float gasket, float assemblies, put the new gasket on, and then you can put the floats back in with the seats and the needles. It sits just like that. Then I can turn it over and start to work on my. Uh, put it in, put it inside the the, the the float. Put it in the bowl and then put the weight on start to put my needles in for the uh, metering needles. Now putting the top on the bowl, put your spring in here for the pump and the spring in for the metering valve. Get that in the middle. It takes a little bit of patience to get it in there right. This has to be sitting in there straight so that when you lower this 
lower that, there we go, nice and straight. And this spring here, spring also has to be sitting flat, nice and square. So now when I come in here with my assembly, I'm going to get my weight, and my meter, and those line, align the spring with the pump. Make sure that the bowls are nice and straight. There. Sits down nice and even now. Got my spring. I can feel my spring for my metering needles is working well. And my pump is working good. So that's how you know you got that in there right. Now I can put my metering needles in. So you go around the top of the bowl and you torque it down uh, so that's nice and even. I'll give you a big shot of this so you can see. Just, you just do a, a pattern around, follow the pattern around and get it nice and even all the way around on all the bolts. And then when you put your metering uh, needles in, this is how they, oh, out of focus there. But this is how they work. Uh, the metering, you got that weight that's underneath that's inside with the spring. And these needles here, these two needles, this is how this works up and down. So that's how your metering needles work, just like that. And this arm goes in there, just another arm that goes in there. And as you have your accelerator pump, this is what lifts the needles up to meter the air in and out. It's actually kind of neat the way this metering rod works. There's that piston in there, and that, that, that weight, that piston that's in there with that spring. When this is under vacuum, it pulls these metering rods down. And then when you step on the gas, it lets it pulls up and meters the air out underneath. It's kind of ingenious uh, the way that works. But just that this whole metering pin system with the spring and that piston and how it's tied into the throttle with the pump. So as you pump, as you turn and you step on the gas, this pushes the pump rod down, pump, pumps gas in there, opens up the metering rods and lets air, in, air into it for acceleration, air into the carb. Kind of, kind of neat the way that works. And then there's just a cover that goes on, on for that. Then once you put the choke assembly back in, you slide this choke in and you get this all set up with a butterfly. The linkage on the other side. There's a, remember I told you there's a spring on the inside, the spring. It's sort of going to engage this so it's going to, you want to kind of wind this up so it's going to have some pressure on that, on the choke. So, put this on here like that with the gasket and I'll wind it up, line up my lines and I'll just simply put my screws on and tighten it up in place. Well there you have it guys, that's how you rebuild your carburetor. Now I know it wasn't an exact step by step how to build, rebuild this specific carburetor but I think you got a general idea on how they come apart and how they go back together. Now this isn't bolted on the engine, it's just sitting here because I have to put my lift bracket on here to lift the engine off the stand and take it to the uh, dyno for testing. So uh, they'll put the, the carburetor on the engine when I take it over to the dyno. But this baby is ready to fire up. Our next video will be our dyno test. Thanks for stopping by Pete's Garage.